Hello guys, Nigel here with you again, and here we are with part 11 now of this uh, engine build. Um, before we get stuck into things, I just want to talk about a couple of things. Um, number one, I've noticed the subscriber count is dropping. Now, I'm doing these videos in great detail because I know that people like to see them in great detail. But if it's becoming so boring for people that it's scaring them away, Please let me know in the comments below. I can happily just flick through and, you know, look, there's the head and now the cams are in and now the time is done and there we go, there's a video. You know, um, I can easily do that, but that's what everybody does. I believe there are a, a certain number of people that enjoy seeing everything, but I could be wrong. So please let me know in the comments below. Um, you know, the subscriber count is, is going up fairly slowly. Uh, I have another channel called Nigel's Modeling Bench and that's nearly on 13,000 subscribers now and this one's struggling to get to the thousand. So I'm just interested to know really what you, what you think and what your thoughts are. So let me know in the comments below. Um, the other thing is this video, I am going to talk a lot about errors in the manual um, and the different versions of what I've seen of this front area of the, of the um, Puma engine. So just as a sort of, uh, to cover my own back, um, what I talk about in this video and what I do practically on my engine is my own thoughts, my own experience, if you like, the, from, from reading different bits and pieces. Um, it is by no means to be taken as read, but um, I can certainly tell you that the engine I have here from a 2011 Defender um, in this area doesn't resemble what the manual is talking about. And it would appear that there are, I, I've, I've identified three different systems now, um, particularly around the fuel pump. There are also errors in the manual that if you follow the manual, it's impossible. Um, they, they talk about taking the, um, taking the fuel pump off. You can't take the fuel pump out without doing some of the things that I'm gonna talk about in this video. Um, the other thing I realised, the gasket set, it's, it's supposed to be a complete engine set. It doesn't have an O-ring for the fuel pump, so it's not a complete engine set, is it? Um, so, that, and, and it says in the manual that O-ring should be replaced. So I don't have an O-ring that size. So I think what I'll probably do is just put a very, very thin layer of um, the, the, the sealer around, the, um, around the, the back of the fuel pump. Just a very thin layer, just, just in case the O-ring weeps. So uh, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and that really is about that. Um, so let's get on with it. The other thing I wanted to say is I did have a very quick look in the transit manual last night online. I have been asked to put a reference up for it. You can't put links up on, on, um, on uh, YouTube because they get taken down. But if you search um, Ford Transit 2.4 TDCI manual, you will find it and it's a very funny it comes up as, as a sort of full screen and then very quickly it goes down to this narrow band in the middle and it's got a hundred, well not hundreds, but lots of adverts down either side and they're all flashing away and it's a bit of a pain in the ass but the manual is free and it does give you some information that the Land Rover manual doesn't give you but it's still not good. Um, it looks to me like the people that wrote the Land Rover manual picked up the Ford manual and just basically copied it and because it has the same mistakes, it's very strange. Uh, and, and also, what I was gonna say is, in the, in the transit manual, before doing any timing, they take the rockers off. So that way, remember I showed you yesterday in the, in the build, you can, you can spin the cams um, because they're not contacting the valves or anything. So you've got no risk of any valve to piston contact or anything. So you can time the engine up and then put the rockers in afterwards. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so without further ado, let's get to it and start to uh, start to do some stuff. Okay, so here's the array of parts that we're going to be fitting uh, today. Um, fuel pump, fuel pump hub, fuel pump sprocket, exhaust sprocket, inlet sprocket. This is the O-ring for the fuel pump, goes on there. And then we've got the nut that holds the hub on. We've got the four bolts that hold the sprocket onto the hub. And then we've got the six bolts here that hold the two uh, sprockets onto the cam, onto the uh, cam shafts, and then in here we've got the cam chain. Um, one piece of advice, again, this is just my advice, it's nothing other than my experience. If you are going to be, if you're stripping a low mileage engine, you're going to be reusing the timing chain. Don't wash it out. Um, 
just keep it in a bag sealed, keep the dust and dirt away from it. If you wash it out, you're likely to get all the oil out from between the links and everything. And, you know, you don't want it running dry or sitting there rusting or whatever. So it's best just to not bother. For the little tiny bit of oil it holds, don't bother washing it out. If the engine's had no mechanical problems and it's low mileage and you're reusing it, then fine. Um, so, basically, this is what I want to talk about now where the manual goes wrong. If you look at the manual where it tells you to remove the fuel pump, it tells you to remove these four bolts from the sprocket, okay, and then you can take the, the fuel pump out. Well, the thing is, this fuel pump has this hub on the front, and there's a there's a woodruff key there and a slot in here. So that goes on there on the taper, as you can see there. Okay, the other way round, Nigel. Okay, and then the nut goes on and holds that on. Now, the trouble is, they tell you to remove these two bolts and take the fuel pump out. But if we come round to the engine, here, we can see there's the hole where the fuel pump goes. But we can see that this hub is bigger. So you can neither fit the fuel pump on, like so, or remove it because that hub is bigger. So you need to undo the nut swing you around so while the while it's actually on the engine you need to undo this nut okay you can put a um a lever which i'll show you in a minute when i do it all up in these holes here when the sprocket goes on like that i believe it's like that um they will become holes you can see and then you can get a tool in there to lock that and then you can undo everything so that's what we'll be doing in a minute um so you need to undo that nut and then use a puller to pull this off. It comes off with quite a force and then you can remove the fuel pump should you need to. And then obviously reassembly is a reverse of that and we're going to do that now. So um, let's get on and get this fitted. So that's the first bit of the manual that I think is, um, is sort of wrong, in error if you like. Okay, so they said it wouldn't rain today but it's raining. So it's supposed to be a nice dry bank holiday weekend. Never mind. So we've got the uh, fuel pump here and I've put a, as you can see, I've gone around a little dab of silicon around there just, just in case that O-ring weeps, but uh, I don't think it will. So we're going to get this in, make sure we get the right way round with the pipes to the outside. So that's going to go in like that. And then I've got bolts down here and I've got some thread lock on the bolts. Uh, not so much to lock the threads, but to seal because that's an open thread into the back of the engine into the inside of the engine and um, i've got the socket over here just out of reach and prepared again and we're just gonna wind that in a couple of turns without dropping anything hopefully you can see what i'm doing we'll just get the fuel pump located like that Grab the other bolt, put that one in the bottom. Again, we'll wind that in. Make sure your threads in the block are very clean as well, otherwise the thread lock tends not to work if the holes are oily. So um, you, you need to kind of make sure the, the threads in the block are nice and clean. So there we go, so that's all. In there nice and what I want to do is make sure it's central on that o-ring because it's the, the o-ring just sits in a in a chamfer machine into the black of the block and as you can see there's no real positive location so we need to make sure it's pulling down central which I guess is where that silicon might help so done up like that. The bolts are torqued. Okay so there we go bolts are torqued in now. 23 newton meters I believe it was. Yeah 16 pounds feet which seems extremely loose but hey ho. So well, there we go so they're in um, and now we're going to move back around to the front of the engine and start getting the pulleys on. Okay so now we need to look at getting this hub fitted onto the front of the fuel pump. <clears throat> and this nut holds it on it's on as I say it's on a taper and a key 
this nut holds it on. Now I did actually yesterday find the torque figure finally for this and it is 64 newton meters. I found it in the actual Land Rover manual under fuel pump. So um, yeah, it says sprocket nut. Although um, I did ask Ian the question on the Defender 2 um, forums and um, he came back and told me it was 33. So I questioned him, I said, I think 33 is these. And he's like, yep, you're right. And he sent me a picture and it shows it being 55. So God only knows what it's supposed to be. But I do know there are three versions, okay? There's this one here where you've got this hub that goes on over the, the, um, the taper with the Woodruff key and then the gearbox on the front. There appears to be a one piece, which is before this, where, sorry, there's, a, there's a, uh, another one that goes on where you actually have a hole you put a rod through to time the engine. It doesn't have this hole here. So that's worth looking at. That pattern there seems to be sort of transit mark seven. And then when you get to the 2.2, it looks like the fuel pump isn't timed at all because um, the actual sprocket comes in one by the look of it and it just has a taper. There's no Woodruff key. So I'm guessing there's no timing on the 2.2 pump at all. But again, this is all my opinion. It's not fact. Um, so what we're going to do is fit this now onto the front of the fuel pump. Now we need to put a tool in to hold that. And the trouble is with those slots there, the tool is likely to slip. So what I'm going to do is temporarily fit. That was a weird noise. <laughs> I'm going to temporarily fit these bolts in here. I actually made the dog jump. Um, I'm going to temporarily fit these bolts in here because then I've got, as you can see, I've got then holes to put the tool in to lock it rather than just having those cutouts. So I'll get these in, get that on, get the bars, get the torque wrench out and then we'll get it all done. Okay, so we'll get the sprocket on. So the sprocket can go on like this. And the reason I'm fitting this temporarily, I just I forgot to say, is because I don't think you can get the chain on it with it fitted in place. I don't think there's enough clearance here to get the chain over it. So uh, I'll be taking it off again. Um, so we'll fit the nut like this onto the front. Just so that butts up. I'll grab my locking tool, which you've seen me use before on the on the diffs and everything. So what I can do now is, is actually turn this to get it a more convenient place for me to hold it. Get the socket over there, it's a 21 mil. And I've got the torque wrench set to uh, 64 newton meters. So I can then torque that up. Like so. And that's that done. So there we go. And then we can take the... Yeah, I don't think the chain's going to go over. So we're going to get the sprocket about to there, which is roughly where it needs to be. But I'll leave those bolts in because the chain might go over. We shall see. But I know the chain won't go over on these. So what I need to do is, is on the um, cam sprocket, sorry. So what I need to do is fit the chain to the sprockets at the same time as I fit them to the cams. So let's get on and do that next. Just another thing, guys, the manual does completely fail to mention in any, anything that it's talking about. They, they, they don't talk about locking the crank in the right position in the Land Rover 2.4 TDCI manual. So that's something you need to make sure you do before you put the chain on, otherwise you're gonna um, have a bad day. So ignore this bracket. This is just something I've put on here to protect this monkey metal from getting broken off. That's why this bracket's on there. But um, basically I've made this tool up. I have heard people talk about using a 13 mil drill. Well, that's 10 mil, so a 13 mil drill won't do it. You need, you need a tool or a 10 mil drill inside a sleeve or something like that. Um, so basically that's going to go in there and you can see we've got all these cutouts You can see on the top here. We've got all these cutouts in the flywheel and basically there's one cutout which is wider than the others And we want this to go in Like that, okay, so that needs to go into that and then what I'm going to do is rock the crank Backwards and forwards and kind of set it in the middle. So there we go So now we've got that in the correct position and our engine is timed in the right place So I'm going to leave that in there Okay, and that will make sure that nothing turns if I pull the chain on the on the crank or anything. And I'm just going to wing that over there and just do that nut up and that will hold it in and uh, again save it getting knocked. Okay, so you can see here I've got both the cams locked with the um, with the six mil drills in there. Not really 100% necessary at this point because we don't have any followers in there. So nothing's going to turn and hit your pistons anyway. But I've um, got those in there and then what we've got is the... 
the actual sprocket so they're going to go over so that this hole down here is going to go over like so okay so that's how that's going to go in and as i say the reason i'm doing this is because you can't get the chain on once the sprockets are on so if you look at the chain we can see here we've got some colored links you can see we've got two there which are fairly close together okay there's one there's one here and then there's one here and then a bit further around there's another one here okay so that that's for the fuel pump and these are both for the cams so what i'm going to do is get the exhaust cam sprocket and on there you can see there's an arrow so we'll line that up with the colored tooth the colored link okay so that's the exhaust and then the inlet will do the same line the arrow up like so okay and i've got myself in a position where i can't turn my hand over there we go so now we've got the inlet and the exhaust there with the colored links okay so we can now take these slide them over our six mil drills and then just put them on to the front of the cams like so don't stress the chain sideways if the chain is up against something don't force it um, you know don't try and bend it because you will not do it any good at all okay so that's going to sit like that and then that's going to go around the outside of there so i'm going to put one bolt in each just to hold them in place all right so as you can see we cannot get the chain over the sprocket yes we can i didn't think we, it would go No, it won't go. It won't go past that casing. It'll go here, but it won't go at the top. And I don't really want to force anything. No, it's not going to go. It's literally, <laughs> literally a couple of thou, I think. I don't really want to force it and scratch anything. So I'll take these bolts out. Just caught my hand on the back of that drill. I'm going to swap them over, I think, because this one is a wood drill with the point on the front. Ow. Blood. So... In fact, if I just loosen them and pull the sprocket out a bit, that should be enough. Yeah, to get it on. There we go. So, there we go. That's that chain on there. So we've got the light, the, the mark now lined up with the hole. So that's all good. And I'm going to have to tend to my finger because it's bleeding a lot. Do those bolts up loosely. In fact, we can actually tighten them up. They don't need to be loose because there's no movement on this at all. Obviously, the fuel pump doesn't need to be that accurately timed. So I'll get those tightened up. And all I'll do is use the same as I did before with the lever. And then I'll get a couple of bolts put up in here and get my finger dealt with. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is fit the lower tensioner. And that's because to get it correct on the crank, we've got the, we've got the, the lined up. The lines are all lined up here. I've changed that drawer, by the way, so I don't cut myself again. Um, but basically what we're going to do is get it correct on the crank. So because it's pulling that way, what we're going to do is actually have the chain tight with it all pulled that way. And then we get it on the crank in the right position. So we're going to fit this tensioner in here. So we've got a, a 50 millimeter bolt going through there. 50 millimeter by M6 bolt, and then we've got a 25 millimeter M6 screw going down here. Okay, so I'm going to grab a socket. Just nip them up. They're then up to 15 newton meters. In fact, I'm not going to make the mistake that some people may, may have made before. I'm going to go on and torque them up now. Okay, so they're talked up. It's always best, whenever you're working on things like this, guys, don't get any distractions or whatever. Don't ever put anything in finger tight that you know you're not going to go back to. I know these are finger tight because I need to do that after everything's done. But stuff like that, you could easily forget. And if one of them comes out while it's running, it's going to make a bit of a mess. So, right, so now that we've got that in, we need to have the chain pulled nice and firmly Okay, so the fuel pump is, is right on the link. 
you know the crank is in the right position so I'm going to pull the chain down okay I'm going to have to go up a tooth because I can't go any more clockwise so we've got to turn the turn these sprockets round to there and then see if we can get it onto the crank here we go so now that's on the crank and when it's pulled tight we've got adjustment on here still you can see we're in the middle of those slots if we were a link I'll just go a link out just to show you if you find you like that okay so the chain is still loose here and I haven't got any more movement I know I'm a link out so I'll come down another link like that and you can see that with the chain because when the tensioner goes in the chain will be held over like that okay so this is the guide I call, I call it a tensioner didn't I it's not it's a guide so that's lined up there that's lined up there that's lined up there and we've got movement either way on these pulleys and we're, we're on that um, guide there so we know we're good okay so I've done these up off camera by the way and I used a 21 millimeter ring spanner on that nut to hold it to, to tighten them up what we must do is avoid actually putting any stress on the chain or anything we've got these to lock these when we do these up with this one it'd be so tempting just to torque it and you're putting all that stress on the chain support that and do them up that way right so that's that done we've got the top guide to go in as well and that's going to be 15 newton meters and then we're going to look at getting the tensioner in okay so now we've got the tensioner guide and that's basically going to go in that way and you've got a pivot here and the tensioner is basically going to push against here and keep the chain tensioned have a look down there see if it's got any significant wear and that's got some lines um one other thing i want to say is if you wash your parts in paraffin tanks and stuff avoid washing these with any chemicals um some plastics are affected by paraffin and some solvents and stuff be very very careful i i as you see i haven't washed these i've just wiped them over they've still got oil on them from the from the last running um but basically i just i just wipe them off i don't actually put any sort of any brake cleaner or paraffin or anything so that's going to go on that and we've got this special torx bolt here which is like a pivot and that goes in there and that's what it pivots on okay so this is going to go in here so this is going to pop in behind the chain like so this would be so much easier to do if the camera wasn't on um, and then that bolt's going to go into a threaded hole there and it's actually saying 15 newton meters but it's like an m8 thread on it so i'm going to go a little bit tighter okay so there's 15 a little bit more there we go so that's that's going to tension the chain that so now you can see when the chain is tensioned you've got middle of the slot middle of the slot lined up there we're all good and the crank is locked as we know so there we go so now we need to look at the tensioner okay so as you can see the tensioner is here now from looking at various bits online and manuals and stuff it looks like there's a few different types of tensioner you see this one here has um, the plunger it's got a tab on the front and what you do is you you pull that back and then you can close this up in a vice and then you put a um I've used a rivet as you can see through there and that holds it in the closed position when you do close it in a vice close it very slowly don't just try and wind the vice in and rush it you may damage some seals or something again I never wash these um, I don't know what's inside there I don't know what could become damaged so I just leave them just wipe them over um, okay, that's going to go into here all right and then we're going to put that we're going to make sure the mating face is clean actually Make sure there's no burrs or edges or anything on it. Same on here. Make sure that face is nice and clean. I've blown all the holes out previous to starting today's video. So we're just going to put that in there. There's no alignment dowels or anything. Surprise, surprise. It's just literally the bolts. Because it's the cheapest way. It's such a shame. I mean, things are going and, and they're getting worse. So maybe electric cars will be good. <laughs> I can't believe I actually said that. No, they won't. So, here we go. So we can... Come on, do them up to the 15 newton meter torque.
Okay, so that's all good. So that's pulled down, that's actually operated by oil pressure, so, uh, so that's all cool. So now that that's like that, we can pull the, the pair of pliers. Just check that everything's okay. Everything's all lined up, they're in the middle, that's on there. Right, so we can pull that rivet out. And there you go, that's it, tensioned. And as you can see, that's held over quite tightly with a spring. And then you also get oil pressure going in behind it. So we can see now that that is, there's like a ratchet. You can just about, if I bring you in, and here, you can see that in here, we've got like ratchet teeth, so it ratchets back. Okay, so uh, there you go. Okay, so now that that's all done, we, all we need to do now is torque up these three bolts in each, um, in each sprocket. So we've got the drill in there and that's going to support it so we're not putting any stress on the chain. Just going to bring them down just so they're seated. Just like so. Make sure the drill is fully in. Yep. And then we can tighten them. Okay, let me do the same on this one. Double check, we don't want them coming loose. They're 35 newton meters, those. And we can take those drills out. And as you can see, it's all just sitting there lovely. We've still got the crank locked on the back, so we're not gonna turn it over anything. So now we're gonna move on to um, fitting the uh, the rockers on the top. Right, anyway guys, I just spent another bit of lunch. Um, I also had a look on the transit forums to find some pictures of this because there's an M6 threaded hole there and there's nothing in it and I'm wondering what goes in there and it looks like there's nothing goes in there at all. So uh, that can just stay as it is. Um, but I was also looking, I was reading one of the pro problems. If you remember I said about not putting the sump on, Sure enough, one of the guys was doing a timing chain and he dropped one of the guide bolts down into um into the sump. So uh yeah, so that was that was why I said that basically. You don't put the sump on until last, and then if you do drop anything, you can get it out of the engine easily rather than uh, having to unstick all the sump again. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna look at putting all the um basically got this here. This is the this is unusual. I've never seen this on an engine before, but it's actually a complete metal frame with all the hydraulic lifters and the roller rockers and everything in it. So again, I haven't washed this out because I don't want to fill anything with paraffin or anything. So it's just had a wipe off and a blow off with the airline and we're going to get it fitted. The other reason I was looking on the transit forum is according to the manual, these bolts have to be replaced, but they're done up to like, I think it's 10 Newton meters and then 45 degrees. So they're hardly going to be stretched. Um, I'll put a drop of thread lock on them just in case, but people don't seem to bother um, replacing them. So, I'm sure you're not going to worry, they're not, not that stupid little tiny torque. So if they were M6s, then maybe, but, um, you know, I'm kind of wondering, in fact, I might even do a test to see how tight that is. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so we'll get the, uh, get the rocker assembly on there. I've cleaned all the faces off and, as I say, blown everything out. So we can see that on the rocker here, it's marked. You can see we've got an in and an X, which is a good of them, so... Very, very simple. So that's basically just going to drop in there. It does have some dowels in it, which is, again, a nice touch. So we'll just drop this down in on those tapered dowels. And that's just going to sit there like so. Um, we need to make sure that the rockers are all actually over the valves because they've got a, like a locating ridge in them. We'll make sure as we pull it down that it's all, all going down the same. Okay, so I'll do is let's put the bolts in. I have put a, I've put a tiny drop of thread lock on the bolts. And I've just dropped one on the floor, which is absolutely wonderful. I need to put some blocks under the front of my bench so everything rolls back rather than rolls forward. Let's just get those in like that off the floor. Luckily the thing's not stuck in the thread lock. The floor is dry. So 
So that's that. There is a disadvantage to having this designed this way. Um, it's lovely for putting it together, but the disadvantage is uh, generally if you're building an engine with hydraulic lifters, you would leave the lifters soaking in oil so that the air would escape from them and they'd fill with oil. But obviously with something this size you can't. So I'm kind of hoping they're going to prime themselves once it's running. So anyway, um, we shall get these done up. What I'm going to do is get them just to work, just to and there's no, there's no specified demand, no specified way of doing these. So we'll make sure these rockers are sat on the bulbs and not to the side of them. So we'll pull these down. Just to go to the resistance. Okay, so now I'm starting to get some pressure on them now. So you've got to be careful because it will snap if you try to put too much in one area. Okay. There we go. Okay, so just check. Get them all centered in the bolts. There they are. And then 13 millimeters and 45 degrees. I'm going to send you all ahead. Okay, so just go 45 degrees. So there we go, that's them all done up. Okay, so just to check everything's okay and nothing fouls, we're going to turn it over twice by hand. So um, I've unlocked the back of the crank. I've taken the locks out of here so we can just turn it over now and we can check that we can get two revolutions without anything fouling. If the engine makes a clunk or comes to a sudden stop, stop, go back the other way and revise your timing or Check your dimensions and you've got the right head gasket. All right, now one thing that is worth saying here, guys, I'm going to get this over now so that we're in the back to the correct position. That is with these slots at the bottom. So I should be able to grab a drill. that when it goes in there we go that's in there so get the locking tool for the back make sure that's going to go into the crank it's slightly off there we go which you would expect so there we go that slides in there nicely slides in there nicely so we're all good so that's that the engine is built and timed and we can start to cover it all up now okay so there's the cover on and we've got the seals in for the injectors these seals here in and replacing they're absolutely fine they go around the long bolts that go down through and hold the injectors in there's like a claw that holds them in you'll see that these holes are open and I need to be a little bit careful um, that I don't drop anything down in there so I'm just going to get some bits of paper towel like so just shove them in like that, very loosely, not anything too tight. Just like I did have these down in there before actually, um, if you saw, um, that one's actually ripped. I did have them down in there before. Um, and because uh, you really don't want anything falling down into the cylinders. So that's sort of open to the cam area and the cylinders and everything there. So. Just a couple of bits of paper towel in there. Nothing too tight because you don't want to damage these seals. Now, these are actually the old seals I've reused. The new ones are here. Um, and I'll show you one of the issues I found. Like if you look at this one here, 
you can see the actual spring has got a kink in it which to me just says it's probably not a very quality product and also the other thing I noticed was the outside is a lot softer than the original one when I pressed them in they tried to sort of pop themselves back out again um, which was a bit funny so they didn't really want to stay and they just kept popping themselves back out again and then when I actually had one one of them I pushed it it went on an angle I went to pull it back and the spring came off the inside here and as you can see there's no real retaining for it at all it's just it comes off very easily so I thought mm, I don't know that so I got the old seals out and had a look and they've got a far better retaining on them and they actually fit into the head much tighter now one of them was weeping so I'm guessing they're, they're gonna weep um, all the breathers are clear and everything so I don't know I just have to keep an eye on it I guess um, the trouble is it's going to be quite a job to change them and I don't want to wait it's a bank holiday now. I don't want to be waiting around for new seals to come and I'm not sure the new seals will be any better so um, maybe the thing is just keep an eye on it and keep keep it clean when they weep uh, so um, let's go from there so I'm going to call it a day now um, in, for this video only because it's what is it now six o'clock in the evening I've had enough I'm going to call it a day now so um I'll see you for part 12, 12 is going to be next, isn't it? I'll see you for part 12 real soon and we'll get the, what, the sexy new cover and everything. We'll paint it up and everything. It's going to look, looking pretty, ready to go on. So I'll see you for that when we do it. Bye for now.